Hello guys, today I'll be talking to you about the three must-have apps that I think are essential for every medical student to have. Now, medical students are obsessed with being productive and efficient in our studying techniques, and these apps that I'll be mentioning today are very helpful in achieving that goal. Also, of course, although this is my personal opinion, but many of my colleagues in my university share my same views on these apps that I'll be mentioning. So let's get started. The first app that I recommend using is Medscape. I have found this app, Medscape, to be especially helpful in my fourth year uh, clinical rotations in medical school, where I was talking to patients and one of them was telling me that they had FMF and was taking colchicine at the time for prophylaxis. I didn't know what FMF was, nor did I know what was colchicine and what did it have to do with this disease. So I quickly, after I left the patient, I looked up the disease and this drug on the app. I just wrote the name in the search and I had all the information available. I read on that disease and I understood this medication and its side effects. So after that, I was more educated and uh, more knowledgeable in that disease after I left the patient in a very quick accessible way. Of course, this app also offers you the option of downloading this information in order to be able to access it offline. Now, the second app that I want to talk about in this video is called Anki. It is an especially famous app amongst medical students for good reasons. Of course, I can't explain how it works in detail in this video, so I highly suggest you look it up. But in basic principle, it is an app where, let's say that this is a card. So it puts a question on one side, and on the flip side, of course, this is on your smartphone, but it's the same principle. So you put a question on one side, and then you are supposed to answer it mentally to keep revising the information. And then you click the button, and it shows you the answer. And if you do that for, you can really do it in every single uh, part of medicine. Whether you are talking about pharmacology, microbiology, these are really memorization dependent uh, disciplines. So this app is very helpful in such cases. So for example, if I want to remind myself ACE inhibitors, what are they? So I would create a card for this uh, group of medications. And then on the next side, it would show me their side effects, their mechanism, and what are they used for. So I would keep re revising, revising this information as time passes. This is also helpful to remind myself of diseases and diagnoses. So in the case of Medscape, where I, after leaving the patient, I read on FMF and colchicine, I would take this information and summarize it in Anki, so I would never forget it after that. Because... What's the benefit of talking to a patient and learning about this disease if I'm just going to forget about it a week later and never rem remember what is colchicine or what is FMF? So I would add it to this uh, app, Anki, and keep revising it uh, over and over again. Uh, also, a good thing in Anki is that you have the option of downloading cards from other people. So you can, of course, create your own flashcards and personalize them to your own learning and create them as you are studying. But you also have the option to download them ready-made from online websites such as Reddit or uh, really any website, including the Anki itself. It has the option of downloading previous, previously created decks. So for example, if you want to study surgery, you can just Google or, or look up surgery decks for Anki and you can have the summary of, of the surgical principles for medical students and have them ready on your smartphone to study from or revise from. Now the third and final app which I will mention is not on a smartphone unlike the previous two. It's on my personalized computer and I use it every single day. And I will show you how to use it right now. So this is Google Scholar which is a search engine for research articles by Google. And you can access it by the address scholar.google.com. So let's say that I want to find something and I write cognitive biases in medicine. I have already done that. And it shows me the articles. Now this is nothing new. But the good thing about th this is that it's very accessible. So you can easily classify them or sort them by the date. And you can find the citations. And you also have the option to download them quickly by this link on the right. So if it's available, I can quickly click it and find the PDF and download it. 
Now, a very helpful button as well is the related articles. So this one right here, if you click it, it will quickly give you the number of articles that are related to this one or have cited it, let's say, let's say, and you can read them as well. And this is what I've actually done in my previous videos when I talked about clinical biases and clinical decision making. These are the articles that I have cited if you are interested in them. Now, a very useful feature as well of Google Scholar is that it has this plugin right here, which I will be talking about right now. Let's say I'm going through ResearchGate and I find a nice title that I like and I can just highlight it if I want to access it quickly. I can highlight it and press on this plugin that you can find in Google Chrome and you, it quickly gives you the abstract and the PDF version if it's available. From whatever source it's at, you can quickly download it and be able to read it. So this is very user friendly and it makes your research process faster. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Uh, please like, share and subscribe for more content. And thank you for watching.